Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, shalom, Rastafari, to my Rastafari Chabarim, and shalom to other viewers right here. We're going to address something that confuses a lot of the Hebrews and Israelites and Hebrew Israelites and others who just, just come, just come. Anyone who just come and haven't really put in that work or that discipline, and they're running off of a lot of speculations and, and assumptions made by others that sound nice, but as you build on it, you build on like a faulty, a faulty bottom, a faulty foundation. So let's clear this up right here concerning Hebrew and Yiddish. Just was listening, I think, to Sarnetti had think, one named Rob Rack on and had one named the Apostle. And I've heard this and also and also Dr. Reggie. I heard this conversation before elsewhere as well. And it seems to be a, a popular idiotes. I call it we call it idiotes. Idiot really doesn't mean just being stupid or anything like that. Idiot means, okay, you see it your own way, but you refuse to really study and learn, well, what way is it really? What way is it really? So you kind of just build on your own ignorance. And one of the big ignorances out there is that so-called modern Hebrew is Yiddish, and Yiddish is Hebrew. Even with the Nikudot, when we speak, speak about the Nikudot, the Nikudot What's interesting that the nikudot, that's the pointing, the, the, the dashes. Um, Adonenu, Robenu, I and I, Rabbi Yeshua HaMoshiach, in the Brit Chadasha, he speaks about, you know, one jot, not one jot or tittle. You know, one jot or tittle. Now, the jot and the tittle is like the nikudot. The nikudot is like the, the, the pointings that you find in what's called the Masoretic, Masora. Masora is an interesting word, need to get into the etymology and the basics of Masora. Very good point of reference, um, the metaphysical Bible as it touches on the phi cycle, the physical, the basic aspect, as well as what we would say, the second of the two truths, because most languages have a duality to it, especially the Afro-Semitic languages. Yiddish is not a Afro-Semitic language. So Hebrew, right? Hebrew, what's called Hebrew, and got to touch on the next video too, um, the next teaching on the vlog that Hebrew is not really Hebrew. Once again, Hebrew is not really Hebrew. Really, the language really is Yehudit, Yehudit. The more proper name for what we call Hebrew today is Yehudit. We're gonna save the paleo point, right? Not for last, but we're gonna build on the paleo point. I know others probably are saying, oh, it's paleo Hebrew, it's not dealing with the paleo Hebrew. First thing, let's first of all take it from where we're at right here today. So Hebrew, right? Ibrit, right? Ibrit or Abrit, Ibrit, what's called Ibrit, is not Yiddish. Yiddish. Hebrew is not Yiddish. Let's just make this very clear right here, here, here. I'm gonna bring out what receipts, proof, points, evidence that Hebrew, what is called Hebrew, is not Yiddish. And Hebrew, actually, this is a secondary point, hopefully to build on, if not here, we'll follow up, definitely seek to follow up that Hebrew is not really Hebrew. Hebrew is not Hebrew. What's the real name of Hebrew? That's, these are all in that particular subject matter right there. But we wanna clarify right here that Hebrew is not Yiddish. And so they expose their ignorance concerning, we heard one guy say, one um, Hebrew or Israelite guy, we call them, a lot of them are just, just come, and even if they've been in this Toronto tradition, you know, this Hebrew Israelite tradition for a moment, they still haven't developed those basic disciplines. You see, when one recognizes they don't know something, still really learning it, learning it and mastering it they run from it and then they make up a bunch of rumors and stories like okay the pointing that you find in certain modern hebrew texts even of the, the the torah or the chumash they'll say oh 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 that's yiddish that's yiddish that's yiddish there i don't i don't read that i read the paleo ah ba ah ah you know like one or two vowels and then they'll say that well hebrew is not it doesn't have many vowels. They say Hebrew only has like the ah 
and and what's the next one they say maybe maybe an e sound it has an ah sound and an oo sound like only has ah e and oo this is because they haven't applied themselves to the basic discipline the ba there's some basic discipline and over the past we could say 400 years definitely but more so over the past we could say 2000 years you know, we have really degenerated as once lost, now found, Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel. Not to even recognize that the Nikudot was actually invented by our own people. You know, we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, of Yehuda, is Yehudit. The language is really called Yehudit. And this was a Masorah or a tradition because the place in which books were written, and we're speaking about the OT, the so-called OT time, the breach Ishana time, was actually a place called Masoret. Masoret. You see, when you understand the basics of the Hebrews and you apply yourself to the reading of the scripture, the basic discipline, seeking to really encourage my I and I brothers to really apply themselves to the discipline. Because in order to master, right, in order to master, to get out this matrix one must first of all not run from the elements of the matrix so to speak that they don't understand but to learn and to master it and it doesn't take away from who we are right but then we start to spread these lies to the babies like to job the little babies right the little babies are picking up on this in the pseudo consciousness and the full woke folks out there having their well, not all of the debates are, are, are silly. Some of the debates are really, really good. There are some presenters that really bring something to the discussion or the reasoning, a point of view, something that's well thought out and well um, resourced, right? Resourced out. But the first basic, 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 that Hebrew and Yiddish, right? Hebrew and Yiddish are two different languages but they are spoken mainly by the same people the european we can say the ashkenazi the gomorite the european um nowadays jews check check hebrew and yiddish are languages they're two separate languages but the similarity is because the same european jewish people ashkenazi by and large German Jews as well speak right both or they deal with both languages Hebrew for more of the we could say like Judaism and the religious aspects of their of their life and the existence and Yiddish coming from Yiddish is like their mother tongue the mother tongue have you heard ones refer to mother tongue now, Genesis, Bereshit, Genesis chapter 11 is also very, very interesting. We're going to point to that there because of the significance of mother tongue. Mother tongue and Genesis chapter 11. Once again, mother tongue and Genesis chapter 11. So let's first of all just build on this right here that Hebrew, Ibrit, is not Yiddish. And... Hebrew, what's called nowadays Hebrew, is not really Hebrew. The Hebrew is not Hebrew. Right? That's the second point we'd like to build on. But that 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 there would be best presented in its own subject, its own vlog, its own topic matter. But Hebrew and Yiddish, remember the word, the conjunction is and. So we're not speaking about the same thing. Right? Martin so-called Hebrew is influenced by Yiddish but if you don't understand that Yiddish is a separate language than Hebrew than biblical what was called Yehudit but what we know to be called Yehudit but what others refer to as Hebrew then everything you think you understand is only going to serve to confuse you confuse you point that goes along with that is concerning the Nikodot the nikudot, the nikudot are the pointings, or like the dots, and we could say by extension the dots and dashes, right? It's not something that so-called European Jews made up, but something that they came into because our ancestors, the Yehudi from the second, from the first and second century time, right? The first and second century time, we're going to that period of time that they call like the AD, you know, or the CE, CE for Christian era about 2,000 years ago. 
right? But even before that, this was already developed during the time of Ezra, right? Of Ezra and Nehemiah, Nehemiah, ne Nehemiah, Ezra and Nehemiah. This is at the return of the black Yehudi, the Yehudim, the Judahites that returned from Babylon, right, to Jerusalem or to the New Jerusalem to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem as well as the temple, right, the temple of Shlomo HaMelech Negus Solomon, King Solomon. So this can be referenced within the scriptures to Ezra and Nehemiah, this particular period of time. So that this particular period of time where those who had recalled and understood Right, how the we could say the Ibrit, right, the Ibrit letters, right, the Ibrit letters were said, right, developed pointing, right, developed a pointing system. So the pointing system was not created by so called white Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, but what they did do right was preserve this just like we have a lot of white folks that love hip-hop or black art or but rather than hip-hop we have hip-hop today but let's go back to some of the older forms the blues even the banjo music i'm using music because music has to do with words sound the scriptures is musical the scriptures the bible the scriptures is music is word sound there's more music and rhyme in the what's called the Hebrew Bible, right, and the Hebrew language contained in the Bible, what's called the Bible, we don't really like to use the word Tanakh so much, we know it's the acronym, this is something that we could say the latter-day Jews or the Ashkenazi, the Gomorite Jews, this is an acronym Tanakh. <coughs> Tanakh actually refers to a Canaanite city. Now, our doctrine teaching is that so-called white people are actually descended from the Canaanites. Now, the popular, the popular um, nowadays, like there's this assertion that Hebrew is actually Canaanite. Now, that is not true, that Hebrew is Canaanite, right? But just like English, you could take English letters, you could take the, the English letters are actually Latin. English are actually Latin letters. You can take the English letters right, called Latin, right, etymologically Latin, and you can write any, almost any language. You can transcribe or what they call it, transliterate other languages into what's known as the English or the Latin script. The same thing can be done with what is referred to as the Paleo-Hebrew. The same thing can be done with the Ibrit, the Abrit, right, language, the Yehudi. The same thing can be done with our letters. For our letters, we can transcribe, you know, we can use the Hebrew letters and write English, right? This way we speak in English, we can develop a way of writing, right? Writing it in the Hebrew script, even though it would not be Hebrew, but people who don't know the script, seeing us, would say, oh, look, they, they speak Hebrew, right? But our mother tongue is something different than an Afro-Shemitic because our mother was not Afro-Shemitic. See, I'm basically speaking out the Ashkenazi story concerning the Yiddish. They write Yiddish in Hebrew. They write Yiddish. They, they write the Yiddish, right, which is a... Yiddish is a German dialect. Once again, Yiddish, what is called Yiddish, is a German dialect that uses or appropriates right, many Hebrew words but with a very different and distinctive Ashkenazic or Ashkenazi Gomorite according to we have was that Genesis Genesis Bereshi thing around Genesis chapter is that 10 Around about Genesis chapter 10, Genesis chapter 11. In those chapters there, we'll find out who the Ashkenazi are and that they are not from Shem. They're not from Shem. They are from Gomer. But that's a related story. They're from Japheth or, or Japheth. Right there, there, there. Right? So Hebrew and Yiddish are languages spoken by modern European Ashkenazi Jews all over the world while hebrew is a semitic language 
right? It's a subgroup of what's known as the Afro-Asiatic languages. Let's, let's bring some of our um, resources and reference. Because what needs to be understood, what, what, what needs to be understood and understood carefully is that Yiddish is not Hebrew, but Yiddish can be written and is written with the Hebrew letters and certain Hebrew or we say biblical Hebrew words are inserted. It's 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 almost like um it's almost like it's almost like a kind of a creole. Yiddish is almost like a sort of a, a creole, right? Basically it's German, right? Yiddish is basically German that uses many Hebrew words but with the very different and distinctive Ashkenazi European Jewish pronunciation. And many of the Ashkenazi European Jews, when they speak Hebrew because of their mother tongue, right? Because their mother is Germanic, Gomer, G German, Ashkenazi, because their mother tongue, right? They speak the biblical Hebrew with a Germanic dialect or a Yiddish, a Yiddish dialect. So what they're actually reading is the correct many times, not all the time, but many times the correct pointings. Right? Remember, the pointings go back to Ezra and Nehemiah. And Ezra and Nehemiah, we have the time period of about mm, 500 something, right? 500 something. So they go back to that time. So what we know as the Nikodot or the pointed Hebrew, like the Masoretic Hebrew, the Masora. That was a very old tradition, a very old tradition that goes before even the time of the first century, the time of Robenu Yeshua HaMushiach, speaking of our rabbi Yeshua, of Notri, of Natsri, Yeshua HaNatsri, HaNotsri, Yeshua of Nazareth, right? So we really need to look at Hebrew. What is Hebrew and what is Yiddish? What is Hebrew and what is Yiddish? Yiddish is written in the Hebrew Aleph Beit, the Ha Aleph Beit. The Ha Aleph Beit is the alphabet. Yiddish, Germanic language, Germanic dialect of the Ashkenazi European Jews, is written in the Hebrew Ha Aleph Beit. You know, the other day there was something, it was the COVID thing that was going around. And they were like, you know, we get in the mail, get in the mail, like the daily, you know, the mail that comes through. And I had noticed they threw some mail, you know, you know, different mail comes. And there was one particular, like, a, I have it around here somewhere. I saved it as a, as a sample, as an example. And it was basically like written to, you know, inform ones of what to do in the COVID and how to protect themselves and, you know, the social distancing and all of that. And it was written in different languages, you know, like many of these documents, many times, even sometimes bills and other kind of things, they would like appeal to like they're having Spanish, English and Spanish, right? And then they'll maybe have, you know, also when it's written Korean, different, like, you know, but this particular document, I noticed what was interesting about this document, <clears throat> it's almost like when some of these politician People in the politics are like kind of advertising their candidate or, you know, their platform, you know, so forth and so on. And I was reading over it because I saw that I saw the Hebrew, I saw the Hebrew glyphs. I saw the Hebrew, the modern Hebrew glyphs or what we refer to as the Asherit, the Asherit, right? Because after the Yehudi came out of um, Babylon, when they came out of Babylon, right, when they came out of Babylon, they, it's like they adapted certain things. They were there for roughly 70 plus years, right? About 70 years, actually, according to the script. So about for 70 years, some remain, not all left. It reminds me of the repatriation to the land grant, you know, Shashimani, the Malakota, Ethiopia, all back in the late 20s and 30s with our rabbis, Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford, Wentworth Arthur Matthews, others making that connection there are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians of the meal children of Israel right another point also to make that the the Ethiopian um, Hebrews or Yehudi or Jews 
right? Because they speak the Gutas, right? And the Amharic, the Gutas and the Amharic is closer related to the biblical Hebrew than the Yiddish is, than the Yiddish is. So then you have to wonder, you don't have to wonder, you shouldn't have to wonder, well, why do they fight so much against those people and try to challenge their Israelitish or their Hebrew or their Judaic identity, right? Because the proof is right there, but people don't really know about the linguistics. It's a discipline, right? And it requires, right, study, right? It requires study and it requires also the points of evidence some of this we're going to bring forward right here. So the Yiddish is written in the Hebrew alphabet. Yiddish nowadays is written in the Hebrew alphabet. Like we can take various languages and we can transliterate them in the, you know, with the English alphabet, the English or the Latin alphabet, right? So that means we who speak and read English and are familiar with the so-called English Latin letters, we can see it and we can begin to sound it out. That's what is happening when some of the Israelites or the Hebrew Israelites look at some, you know, you know, look at some writing that's in Hebrew, right, by the European Jews, the Ashkenazi Jews, and they believe, oh, if it's pointed, oh, that's that's Yiddish there. No, it's not Yiddish. It's not Yiddish. You have to be able to distinguish Yiddish from Hebrew. And if you cannot distinguish, if I put before you something that's written from the scripture in Hebrew, pointed or unpointed, and then I give you something that's written in Yiddish, pointed or unpointed, can you tell me the difference? I know, I know who could tell me the difference. I, you know, Avi, you know, I know who can tell me the difference. They can tell me the difference, right? But can you tell me the difference? You Hebrew Israelite, Hebrew Israelite, my Old Testament, especially some of the Old Testament cats, though we agree with y'all on many things because we are brothers, right? We are Israel, but we want to clarify this right here to help to um, prompt more of the serious study that's not very difficult. It's not very hard. It's not very hard to do. And the benefits by having these basic principles. So we're saying this as a matter of principle over personality, right? Because many of the other personality down there of Hebrew Israelites, I love them. They're my brothers. But when we hear them continually make these, these, these um, 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 sophomoric, if I can even say that, sophomore means you're in the second year. Right? I guess they probably are. They're not completely freshmen. Freshmen are just trying to figure it out. So I'm basically speaking to the freshmen. When the, I'm saying the freshmen, those who are beginning to become curious about the Hebrew, Old Testament, New Testament, the language, who's a, who's a Yehudi, who's a Jew, who's an Israelite, who's a Hebrew. Remember we said that Hebrew is not Yiddish. Hebrew is not Yiddish. Although much Yiddish Nuff Nuff Yiddish is written in Hebrew. But if you're not able to look at the script, right, and be able to distinguish, you got to be able to distinguish, even when it's written in the Hebrew script, what is written that is Hebrew, 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 right? And modern Hebrew, we have modern Hebrew, we have biblical Hebrew too. Let me just point that out once again. We have modern Hebrew. And we have biblical Hebrew, but we would not have any modern Hebrew if we didn't have biblical Hebrew, and we not would not have modern Hebrew, right? If we did not have those Jews who studied and investigated Ethiopia, Ethiopic, as well as Amharic, right? We're gonna prove this right here. Got a couple more slides to show right here, but. Let's look at the Yiddish again. Just touch on Yiddish. So Yiddish is written in the Hebrew alphabet. Right? Just like all of the European languages, almost all of them that I know of, all the so-called European or so-called white people, as ones would say, nowadays white people, right? But all the so-called European languages, especially the Romance, what they call the Roman, the Roman, the Romance languages, are written in what we would call English letters. Is that true? Look at Spanish. Look at French. Look at German. 
I mean, you can make out the letters. Can't you make out the letters? You can make out the letters. Of course you can make out the letters if you speak and you're able to read. If you're able to read more than speak, but if you're able to read English, you can tell, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a Y, that's an I, that's a D, that's a D, that's an I, that's an A, that's an H. Now, even the name Yiddish, Yiddish is interesting because it is a, a shortening of Yehuda, right, of Yehuda, right, of two Hebrew words. So even the name Yiddish is derived from the more biblical, right, roots, right, of the biblical Hebrew, right, but somewhat shortened. For example, we have Yehuda, Yehuda, right, Yehuda, Yehudi, Yiddi, Yiddi, Yehudi, and Yiddi. You know how we can say something in the long way, or we can short it, shorten it. Some will say believe, others will say believe, 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 believe. Some say believe, some say believe. So th this is a part of speaking and spoken language. But then when spoken language again gets written. See, the thing about the scriptures, about the Hebrew scriptures, that's very interesting, is that the Hebrew scriptures, though many ones knew how to read and, and, and write to some extent, right? Those aspects of, of ancient society were heavily guarded. It's not like today. Today we're on our phones, on our laptops, on our tablets, on different devices, and we're typing and texting. But you can even see what's going on in the language today when people are typing and texting. You can see how because of, um, you know, to get it out the way and to, you know, to be expedient, you know, how things become kind of truncated. You know, become simplified, abridged, broken, a lot of broken English. There's a lot of broken communication going on. But still, even with the broken communication, even with English, when somebody texts you, you know, a type text and, and put in some of the acronyms and put in some of the, the, the internet slang and code and everything, or talk very abridged, choppy, and short, you still be able to pick it up many times, especially if it's your friend and this is the way that you and them communicate. You understand what they're saying while somebody else go look over your text, your chat, and everything. Say, whoa, 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 whoa. What's this? What's this like? Like um, um, IRL. I came across it the other day. IRL. What's IRL? IRL, IRL. You know, I'm thinking about it. And um, Isha Shali, right? Ishti, I and I, wife, she said, Oh, in real life. I said, Oh, there we go. It, that means in real life. I, you know what I'm saying? So, but that right there still is a part of the human experience of communication, right? If ancient people, right, if people from like the 50s or the 40s and 30s came back today, and you gave them like social media and they're looking at how people are talking on social media, they'll think this is crazy. They will be amazed at how do people understand what one another is saying because that's not how you write the word. It's like when we look at old writing from back in, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, go back to the 17 and the 1600s. And even before that, we look at old writing. I mean, you ever read uh, Chaucer? <laughs> you know, like some of y'all might not know what I'm talking about right there, but Chaucer, you know, some, some of the old English writings, how they wrote and everything, right? You know, even how they use certain Latinized, that's when you can really tell the roots of the English letters. The English letters have Latin roots. So what happens with Yiddish that's written in the Hebrew Ha'alef Beit, the alphabet is called the Ha'alef Beit, right? It's orthography, it differs significantly from that of Hebrew. Now, what is orthography? What's orthography, right? Orthography, that's one of these little fancy words right here, but let's go right here and just bring this up right here, orthography. I looked it up, I don't wanna say the wrong thing, orthography, yep. The conventional spelling system of a language, right? So though Yiddish, right, which is the mother tongue of the Ashkenazi, Yehudim or the Yidim, the Jews, the European Jews, right, and other European and white folks that ascribe to being a Jew as their identity, who write Yiddish in Hebrew, 
they know that the orthography, it differs from the Hebrew language, from what we know as the biblical Hebrew language and even to a, another extent, modern Hebrew. But they can write it there. So if you or me, or say if you, a Hebrew Israelite, keep saying that, oh, the, the nikodot, you know, the pointing, that's Yiddish. How do you know that's Yiddish? See, what you're confusing, right? First of all, you're confusing your ignorance for your knowledge. If you knew, right, when the pointing, when did the pointing come in? And we're not just relying on a few scholars here, a few scholars there. We've looked at some of their scholarly work, and then we've done our own research, and then also comparing what the scripture testifies to, and even outside of the traditional Western Gentile, we could say biblical research, looking into Ethiopian, ancient Ethiopian manuscripts and writing, and also to testimonies of, of our other brothers. Right, and other communities because it's not only the European or other nations, there are black people, right, who are linguistic and one thing about the Hebrews, right, or the Israelites, right, and the black Jews, you know, as literate people and there's other black people too, but look at Africa and see how many languages have their own alphabet. There were a few, right, but much of the alphabet in many African nations became symbols. Now, note this, that in the Hebrew, the alphabet also has its symbolic, its symbolic point of reference, its symbolic points of reference. But here, let's just continue right here. So the orthography, the way words are spelt, differs significantly from that of the Hebrew. But if you don't know the difference, and you see something that's in the Hebrew, uh, Ha'alef Beit, right, the Hebrew alphabet, Right, and it's pointing or whatnot, or if you see a white man, you know, a white Jew face on it, you might say, oh, that's Yiddish. Sometimes it is, right? But sometimes it's not. So that means that at best, right, we're only hitting 50. We're only halfway, right? And halfway ain't no victory. Halfway still is not the victory. We got further to go for our studies. Right? So in Hebrew, many vowels are represented only optionally by diacritical marks called nikud. Nikud for a singular mark, nikudot. Right? Now, Yiddish, now when Yiddish is written, right, in the Hebrew, it uses letters. Get this? It uses letters to represent all vowels. So when Yiddish, which is a Germanic, a German dialect, when that uses letters, the Hebrew letters to represent, right, all vowels, right? While in Hebrew, many vowels are represented only optionally, right, by certain diacritical marks called the, the Nikud. In fact, when we study the Hebrew scriptures, for ones who don't know, it all would just look like it, it'll look like Hebrew to you. And they say it'll look Greek to you, but in this case, it'll look Hebrew to you, right? However, if you really get into a sample study of passages where certain similar things are being said, not the exact same thing, but a similar use of language, you'll notice different spellings, even in the Masoretic and in the old scriptural scroll Hebrew. For example, sometimes Dawid, to say David, right? Dawid, right? Or some will say David, right? For example, the Yiddish speakers from that particular Ashkenazic um, um, heritage, when they say David, many of them will say David, David. Now, we're looking at the same letters. Notice, we're looking at the same letters. Many of the places you find David's name is Dalet, Wow, right, and Dalet, D-W-D, right? In the majority of places in the Hebrew Bible where you find David, it's usually D-W-D. Now, for the Ashkenazi speakers who have Yiddish, right, as their mother tongue, right, they would say it as the, the Huawei, Huawei as Vav, as Vav. So instead of saying Dawid, my Dawid, some would even say, well, 
Why you say we, the E there? It's really Dawad. Dawad, D W D D V D. See, so the Yiddish would bring it out as D V D. Because their mother tongue, right, coming from German, if you understand German, the W, right, the W is pronounced as a V sound. In German, the W is pronounced as a V sound. And the V in German, get this, in German, is pronounced as a W sound. Just to point it out. So the more ancient way of saying the Yehudit, or what's called Hebrew, name of David is Dawid. Now if you say, well, the second vowel, there's the, there's the A and there's the E. Dawid, Dawid. Why is there a E sound, like a Chirik? as they would say, why is there E sound there? Because if you study the scripture, right, what's called the Tanakh or the Hebrew Bible carefully, and you get into some of the historical areas like Shemuel, like Samuel, you know, and Kings, but especially Samuel, you'll find that Dawid, right, is actually spelled as Dalet, while Yod, the Yod is the Y sound, can also in the context have an E glide to it. Right, so you have Dalet, D, Huawei, W, Yod, Y, and Dalet. That's how we get the proper right, saying and pronunciation of Dawid. So some coming from what some of the Hebrew Israelites, Lashan, Kadash, and some of their theories concerning the holy and the ancient language, they will see Dawid written with the D, W, D, and they will say Dawad, 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 Dawad. But they haven't carefully studied the scripture because in those places like the Psalms, in many of the Psalms, David's name is as Dalet Wow Dalet, which for one who is not familiar and hasn't studied the real roots of Hebrew, they might say, well, it's D, W, D, and they like to add the A vowel, so they'll say Dawad, Dawad. Well, what happens when you come across it, say, in the prophets, and you have it as Dalet Wow Yod Dalet, Dawayada, Dawayad, or is it Dawid? It's Dawid. It's Dawid. Just kind of pointing that out right there that sometimes some of this um, Lashan Kadash and some ones and ones who really, they, they avoid the modern Hebrew. And I think this is a fault, right, among many of the black Yehudi and those Old Testament Jews or black Yehudi. We are black Yehudi, right, but we receive the Brit Kadash, right, the New Covenant, New Testament Scripture, but we refer to Yeshua HaNotri as Robeinu. He is our rabbi. We refer to him as the rabbi of rabbis. He's our teacher. But here, 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 let's just touch on this right here, show a couple more examples. Okay, want to touch on the days of the week. Let's see if we have the days of the week here. Do we have the days of the week here? Okay, hold on for one moment. Let's see if we can bring up the days of the week. Okay, so here, 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 here. Here's one example. I thought we had downloaded it. We did, but sometimes it always doesn't download consecutively, and we got a lot of downloads and everything for some site samples and exhibits like this one right here. This is in Yiddish, just to prove the point concerning Hebrew and Yiddish, right, being distinct and different. Here, we have the days of the week in Yiddish, right? Here it says um, Montique or Montique. It's actually, what's interesting is that if you look at the Hebrew for Monday, what they have as Montique, Montique, right? Montique, right? Montique. They don't click, so they would just say Montique, right? But if we pronounce it according to the ancient pronunciation, it'll be Montique, 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 according to the ancient. So you can hear the difference in the pronunciation, Montique. But remember, they have a different um, orthography than Hebrew. So this is why they say Montique, but actually it has a patach. It even, even has a vowel sound under the A to state that it's an A sound, but how they do it from the um, Germanic mother tongue roots, the European Jews, the Ashkenazi Jews, and when they speak Yiddish and refer to Monday, it's Montique, right? Tuesday 
is is din stick, right? Din stick, right? Din stick, din stick, right? Wednesday is mot vok, mot vok, right? Mot or oh, mitvok, 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 right? This is all Germanic. This is not Hebrew, but note that it's all in the Hebrew alphabet, right? Thursday is is donash. Donerstik, Donerstik, right? Donerstik. Friday is Freitik, Freitik. You, you can even hear the Germanicness of it, Freitik, Freitik. Now, our people, we the black Jews and we could say Israelites and Ethiopian Hebrews, we were all up in Europe. Now, don't get it twisted, right? This is where ones like J.A. Rogers, Nature Knows No Color Line, giving those coat of arms, we can see that black presence, right? Wherever water touches land, as it said in his writings, you'll find Ethiopians that say black man there, right? So don't get it twisted. But what it was showing here is that Yiddish, is not Hebrew, but Yiddish is written in the Hebrew. So you have to be like a wangster on Hebrew level. And you hear a lot of ones talking about, you know, Old Testament, New Testament, the Bible, and, and they don't know no Hebrew. I mean, yes, going to the Blue Letter Bible and some of the interlineal software, if you go back on our history, we were one of the first to actually use that heavy on some of the old channels, and we know that many of the videos, you know, they get re-disseminated on other platforms out there, shown ones and ones how to go into the Blue Letter Bible. That was one of our favorites, especially the old Blue Letter Bible, particularly because of the Gesenius, Gesenius lexicon. Because we always saw in the Gesenius lexicon reference and links to the Gutters, the Gutters. That's what's called the Ethiopic. So that Ethiopic link, and that showed us right there that Ethiopic had a very strong importance, especially in some of the words that we had sampled. Not in every word, it's not always listed after every word, but some difficult words, challenging words, they will go to an older Shemitic, even a pure Shemitic. That's the thing about Ethiopic. Ethiopic is a, a pure Shemitic language, while Amharic is a Afro-Shemitic language, like Hebrew is an Afro-Shemitic language. Now here we have Shibbos, Shibbos, like little Shibbos for Saturday, and then for Sunday, Zuntik, Zuntik. Now you see that right there? We like to do a split screen with this, but so you can see that right there. I just want to show you that clearly right there, the Yiddish days of the week. Montik, right, is Monday, Dinstik, Tuesday, Mitvok, right? Wednesday, Donerstik, Thursday, Freitik, Friday, Shibbos, Saturday, Zuntik, Sunday. So now, what are the days of the week in Hebrew? In Hebrew, right? What's the days of the week in Hebrew? Even Biblical Hebrew? So here, 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 here. All right, so here, 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 here. Okay, so now, here just went back on to um, what they call the airplane mode. So here you see the Hebrew days of the week. Now we already showed you the Mon Teak and, the, and the, all the other Teaks uh, right there. You know, all the Teaks for the days. That was Yiddish. Here's Hebrew. The first day, which in the West is called Sunday. In the West, in the, among the Anglo-Europeans, right? The Western Gentile, the Goyim, the Anglo-Americans right amorites right here sunday is the first day of the week right so for us sunday is the first day of the week most people say monday but for us hebraically the first day is yom rishon yom rishon and rishon come from rosh rosh right in the hebrew similar to ras right ras ras which is head but here we have yom Rishon. What's interesting in Gutters, in the Gutters, Ethiopic, the ancient Ethiopic, the word for day is Yom. Yom as well. Yom. So we have Yom Rishon. And just a point right here, the earliest translations into Gutters, the Ethiopic, the ancient Ethiopic language of the scriptures of the Bible came from Hebrew. The first trans, and this is before the nine saints of Ethiopia. Just that point there, because we heard ones and ones say, oh, the oldest Ethiopian Bible is was translated from the Septuagint. No, 
the later Ethiopian Bibles, the later translations into the Gutas, the Ethiopic came from by comparison with the Septuagint during the time of the nine saints that came from Syria, but also Syretic being an afro shemitic language was in the mix. But the older Gutas and Ethiopic documents were translated from the Hebrew right from the Hebrew and we point to the 12,000 that accompanied the son of King Solomon and the Queen of the South called the Queen of Sheba into the highlands into Ethiopia to renew that kingdom of David in the tops of the mountains but here the Hebrew days of the week Yom Rishon the first day Yom Sheni 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 second day Yom Shalishi Shalishi third day Yom Rebbe, Rebbe. Now you see right there where they have Rebbe with the V. This is because of their mother tongue. See in their mother tongue, right? That's that dublavate thing right there. That dublavate and and the and the and the wow. Once again, in German, in German speech, when you see the W in the German way of speaking, it's pronounced as a V. When you see the V in German way of speaking, it's pronounced as a as a W or as a U sound, a U sound. The B sound sometimes right, by the Germanic speakers is said as a V. So with the fourth day of the week, right, the fourth day of the week, which would be what you call Wednesday, the Yom Rebbe'i, 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 Rebbe'i is the ancient way of saying it. The Yom Yawam Rebbe'i, the modern way Right in modern Hebrew, the Yom Revi, 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 the ancient way, Rebbe, 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 Rebbe. That's the ancient modern Revi, Revi, Revi. You see the difference? So those European Jews who have Ashkenazi and Yiddish roots, mother tongues, right? And that matriarchal DNA thing going on there. They, when they see these letters, because of their acculturization, you know what I mean? This is how they say it, right? But these same letters, when said more according to the Afro, the Shemitic, Yom Rebbe'i, right? Yom Rebbe'i. Then we have the fifth day, which was like Thursday, like Yom Chamishi, Chamishi. They have a CH there. It's not Chamishi. It's Ha, Ha, Ha. More better would be like KH. More better would be like the KH. Chamishi for the letter Che, Che, Chet. Che, 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 Chet. For the letter Chet. Chamishi. Yom Chamishi. Because Chamishi fifth. Then the sixth day, Friday, Yom Shishi. Yom Shishi. Yom Shishi, 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 sixth. Then we come to the only day in the Shabua. Shabua is from the Shaba seven, right? Some would say modern Hebrew, they'll say Shavua, Shavua, right? In the Shabua, right, which is the seven days, we come to the seventh day, Yom Shabbat. Right, the, the Yom Shabbi, Shabbi, the seventh day, is called by name. It's the only day in the week, according to the ancient Israelites and the Hebrew, right? Remember that Hebrew is not Yiddish, but the Hebrew is not Hebrew. They, what's called Hebrew is not really Hebrew, it's Yehudit, right? And the true meaning of Hebrew has to do with the spirituality, right, of that remnant, we could say the elect, Right, amongst Israel. That's what it says, not, not all who are of Israel are Israel. But the Yom Shabbat, 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 the Shabbat, right, the Shabbat. So the Shabbat is a distinctive name, right? So every other day is like Rishon, Sheni, Shalishi, Rebbe'i, Hamishi, Shishi, and Shabbat. Shabbat has a name. Right? Shabbat has a name. This is another very good um, point of reference right here. And you can see when it comes down to the Wednesday, what they call the Wednesday, you can see where they have that V there. When we look at the Hebrew, right, it's actually a bait. So it would be Ribi, Ribi, Ribi. The pointing says Ribi, 
right? But they will say it as, in their convention, the European Jewish Convention, they will say it as Revi'i, Revi'i. Now, we advocate that we should be familiar with the Revi'i, right? But even if we say Revi'i or we use it, you know, in business conversations, so forth and so on, right? We should know that when we now deal with the holy, you know, the, the, the pointing is very, very important. But not to become pharisaical, right? We're not advocating like pharisaicism, right, about it, right? So right here, this is another one right here, another you know, chart that breaks it down, right? To distinguish, you know, what's the difference. This, this is a good one right here. Happy birthday in Yiddish, right? Basically, what you see down here, what you see down here is, is, is German, is Germanic, is Germanic. This is not Hebrew. What's Hebrew is the letters they're using. So they're using the Hebrew letters to write their Germanic mother tongue, right? Their Germanic mother tongue, the Germanic tongue is like what they would use like the Yiddish is what they would use more you know amongst them who understand it well right and then they will use you know the the Hebrew of, of the Hebrew scriptures the Masoretic scripture but they will still pronounce it with a Germanic tongue they pronounce it with a German tongue see that that's the distinction there when we talk about well what is you know what is Yiddish you know what is Yiddish Let's just bring this over here, come out of this one right here. Let's see where we're at over here. And then let's go over here, orthography, right? This is one of the things, you take a screenshot of it, right? Take a screenshot of it. It's important to have a, a screenshot of this right here, right? And then we have this right here. This was also a very important reference as well. Just point out the reference, right? All right, let's just get that off the screen for a moment. All right, let's see if we can grab this. There we go, right there. Of course, then we can use that. All right, okay, now this is something on the Old Testament, right? And New Testament scripture, yeah, so right there. So Yiddish, right? Just a summary right here, right? Written in the Hebrew alphabet, but this, the way they spell the letters differs. Right, and we try to get into some of the detail to bring out hopefully some examples. Yiddish is a Germanic dialect. Let's just read this one here together, right? Hebrew and Yiddish are languages spoken by Jews. And see, they like to do this thing like, like almost to imply that, you know, being white and being Jewish is, can be synonymous, right? And somehow being black and being Yehudi is incongruous. So we just have to kind of point that out right there. And this should be better written that Hebrew and Yiddish are languages spoken by European Jews or Ashkenazi Jews. All right, especially the Ashkenazi Jews because they have roots in like Eastern Europe and then also in Germany. And we know that Yiddish basically is Germanic, right? But written in the Hebrew script, right? While Hebrew, now here's where they make the distinction. Hebrew is a Semitic language, right? Semitic language or Shemitic language. Notice it says, open parentheses, subgroup of Afro. You see Afro right there? Afro-Asiatic languages. Let's just zoom in on this right here, right? Because this is something that ones don't really look at and don't understand the significance of this for us. It says, we the black people over here, so-called Negroes and you know, over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, right? It says, subgroup of Afro-Asiatic languages. So Hebrew is a Semitic language. It's of a subgroup. Now, the big group is Ge'ez. Ge'ez is in the group of the Semitic languages. Then underneath the Ge'ez or the Ethiopic, we have the Hebrew, right? And it says, like Arabic and Amharic. Note this, like a Arabic and you see what it says, Amharic. Let's just zoom in right there so they'll, they'll, they'll see the Amharic. You see the Amharic right there? The Amharic, right? Let's see if we can get take a screenshot of that. Like the Arabic, like Arabic and Amharic, right? Now, they should put a period here, right? Because the new thought that Yiddish is a German dialect. It's a German dialect. Right? And this is what changes like certain pronunciation, like in the word for the um the fourth day, Yom Revi, 
Revi, they would say Yom Revi, Revi, Yom Revi, right? While more correctly, it will be Yom Rebi, 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 or Rebi, 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 Yom Rebi, they'll say Yom Revi, Yom Revi, Yom Revi, because of their dialect, their mother tongue, right? And it uses many Hebrew words, both a very distinctive Ashkenazic, Ashkenazic, right? Ashkenazic pronunciation. All right, so just getting into this right here and just showing that right there, getting into some of the, let's try to sum up where we began right here. All right, I was going to use this example too. This, this sample right here, got about five minutes, just make this an hour, you know, this lecture, sewer right here, sure. All right, a Hebrew to Yiddish names. I want you to see this right here. All right. Hebrew to Yiddish name. They have on the, a truncation of first syllable. So in their mother tongue, almost like the way they are wired to speak or to articulate word sound, there seems to be a, a tightening or lessening truncation. Almost like you put something in the trunk, a packing in of the first sil syllable. Like we take these names here. We have Ephraim. Ephraim, if you read the glyphs, Ephraim, Ephraim. In Yiddish, they'll say Froim, Froim. You get it? Froim, Froim. So the truncation is like taking off that first syllable. So you take off the Aleph, the A, the, the A, right? The A, and then you come with the Froim. But then they don't say Froim, they say that's Froim, Froim. Right, so Ephraim, right, the Hebrew Ephraim, Ephraim in Yiddish is Froim. El Hanan, El Hanan, really it be El Hanan, somebody known says El Hanon, El Hanan, right, like God power, El of Hanon or Hanan, mercy. They say this name in Yiddish as Chono, Chono, Chono. So you, so you see, what's in the scripts is Ephraim. What's in the scripts is El Hanan or El Canaan. El Canaan in the in the in the in the English Bible. Let's take another one. Mine, Yeshaya, 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 right? Isaiah, right? Yeshaya, 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 because you have the Ain. Yeshaya in the Yiddish is Shaya, Shaya, Shaya. They'll say it's Shaya, right? So they'll take Yishiyah, right? Yishiyah, Yishiyah, Yishiyah. They'll take Yishiyah and then make it Shaya. Yisrael, check out, check it out. Yisrael, Yisrael, Yisrael. When we look at the Hebrew, Yisrael is brought out as Surel, Surel. So in Yiddish to say Yisrael, they will say Surel, Surel, right? Because of the truncation of the first syllable in Yiddish among German, Germanic speakers, especially those who speak Yiddish, right? Alexander, 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 Alexander would be in Yiddish sender, sender. So it's like that first that first sound is chopped off. Alexander, Alexander, Alexander is sender. One more, one more here. Eli Ezer. Eli Ezer. Eli Ezer. Eli Ezer. Some say but Eli Ezer. Eli Ezer. Eli Ezer. Right? Eliza. Eli Ezer. In the Yiddish, because the truncation is Lazar. Lazar, Lazar. They say that's Lazar. Now it's interesting what they point in the Hebrew, using Hebrew, how they point it right into Yiddish speech. So they take the Hebrew to continue to speak their mother tongue, their Germanic Yiddish mother tongue. You know what I'm saying? So one can even say it's an appropriation. One can argue whether it's a misappropriation, but it's an appropriation of the Hebrew glyphs but it's a continuation of their Germanic 
mother tongue of German, in a sense, German influenced European Romance language, but written in an Afro Shemitic script. Right? That's what's going on here as we zoom in, right? And and pay attention, right? Pay attention to the detail. Once again, Ibrit, Abrit, Hebrew is not Yiddish. Yiddish. Ibrit is not Yiddish. 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 Hebrew is not Yiddish. And Hebrew, as what people call Hebrew, is not really Hebrew. Hebrew is actually Yehudit. The more proper scriptural point of reference is Yehudit. Now, what is it to be a Hebrew? Right? The Hebrew has to do with the person, has to do with their spirituality and their consciousness. Right, the consciousness of Yahweh Eloheinu, right? Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, He or Israel, He who be who He be, our power, He who be who He be, the one. So Hebrew is not Yiddish. So here, 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 brothers and sisters, we seal up right here. Yeah, we're gonna touch on that right there because some try to make this one for one, the Greek and Hebrew. The fact is that our ancestors. Right, just like many of us today, right, many of us today speak, right, English. Many of our people speak English, even those who might be scholars of some of our ancient languages, such as what's called Ibrit, right, what's called Hebrew or Yehudit, right, um, that if we were to communicate some things, we will have to communicate it. Not have to, but it would be best so that people can understand what we're talking about, communicating it in the language that people speak, namely in the English, right? So even the truths that we might find in Hebrew, we have to find a way, right? Seek to find a way to communicate it to our people, right? So Hebrew, right? Ibrit, well, Hebrew is not Hebrew, but what they call Yiddish is not Hebrew. Yiddish uses the Hebrew letters to communicate a Germanic or European tongue. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. Check it out, check it out. Check out the description. Like, you know, like, uh, share, you know, like and share this video. Repost it if you're able to as well. Um, check out the descriptions if one is able to and willing, you know, always can help support, you know, the ministry of his majesty right here, here, here. But give thanks for your viewing. Um, check us out at LOJS.org. Also, we have the Discipleship Radio podcast. More of the information can be found in the links. Also, you can download the podcast app as well. Any particular questions to share? Please hit us up at the LOJS.org. Hit the contact link right there, there, there. Shalom Rastafari. Shalom Chabarim. Shalom. Yes, I. Rastafari.